Good morning, my lovely 13s. Right, buddies, here we go again, rocking through our amazing new unit of moments. Now, what we're going to do today is actually really cool. The title for today is Moments in Equilibrium. And this is probably the biggest use of moments in real life and in physics and in and in life, really, this is like the reason that we do moments, really, is that you'll see these, you'll see tons and tons of questions that don't even look like they're questions about something spinning or turning or twisting. They're just questions about real life that we use moments to assist us in solving. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. So things that are perfectly stationary, like in this first question here, whatever this is, like um, two supports with a branch or a stick or something over them. How exciting. Cool. Um, so... Yeah, rather than me just droning on forever, should we actually try one? Let's do it. Cool. Uh, cool beans. Here we go. So first question that we're going to try together on the moments in equilibrium part is this. It says, this diagram shows a uniform rod, AB, of length 3 meters and of weight 20 newtons. Uh, it rests horizontally on supports A and C, where AC is 2 meters. Find the magnitude, so we're asked to find the magnitude of the reaction um, at each of the supports. So it wants to know the force uh, that's acting on each of the two supports. Right, buddies. So here we go. First thing that you're going to want to do is, because I've got this on the screen, but you haven't. So the first thing you're going to want to do, my buddies, in all of these questions, it's just like the force questions, is to draw a picture. We need a diagram, okay, a force diagram, like a free body diagram. So here we go. First things first, let's draw a picture out. So we're going to get our big, long stick like that. I'm drawing mine as um, two-dimensional rather than just one stick, because I think that that helps me to understand that it actually does have a mass. Uh, there's a there's a support there. Uh, there's another support here. So there we go. Good old copying out the picture. Right. So here we go. Tell me, my buddies, what are the forces that are acting on um, on this this thingy, my buddies, on the on the. Whoa, oh my God! I can't, I'm at a loss for words. At the stick, the branch, the what is it? The rod, the uniform rod. What is happening at the rod, my lovelies? Right, so two meters, one meter. Okay, tell me a force. What is it experiencing? What does it feel? If you were the rod, what would you be feeling? Well, if you said that the gravity would hold you down, therefore the support would push you up, you're right. There's going to be a force there. I'm going to call that FA, the force at A. Or actually, I'm going to call it RA because it's a reaction force, and that'll be good for your learning. So I'm going to call it RA, even though FA is good enough. Yeah, so this is the reaction force at A. There's another reaction force at C, which is going to be here. And what other force does it feel? What are the things that, why is it not flying into space? That's right, because it has a weight as well. Now, here's where a new word comes in. Remember up here when it said the word uniform? What uniform means, my buddies, is the weight is evenly spread throughout the entire rod, okay? Which means, and if you were in class, I'd be able to show you this, which means that the um, uh, that all of the weight acts as though it's at a single point. That single point is at the very center of the rod itself. So as it is three meters long, the weight is going to act 1.5 meters in because it's half a three. Cool beans, my buddy, buddy, buddies. Hopefully, I hope, I hope, I hope. Well, that's what we're at at the moment, okay? That's where the situation is. So it's all acting at one single point there. Um, what can I show you without actually, oh, because I like to show stuff physically to you, without actually, if you want to right now, take your pen by the end of it, like take the lid off of your pen, and by the end of your pen, hold it up by the end and throw it in the air such that it will do a big spin, okay? So put it, like, put some spin on it so it spins around in a circle. Now, if you kind of look your eyes, if you look at it right in the middle, you'll see that it's spinning around a single point. That single point is the direct center of your pen because pens are very nearly uniformly distributed. So how exciting. Anyway, there we go. Um, and it asks us to find what R and RC is. Now, you might be thinking, okay, great, let's just do a force equation. But there's no horizontal direction, everything's up and down. And if you did the vertical direction when you resolved, uh, you'd get these two R forces, which we don't know, and this one W force, which we do know. 
So we'd have two equa or we'd have two things, uh, two unknowns in only one equation. So we'd be a bit scuppered. So we're out of ideas. So I better give you an idea. Here's what you do: pick one of the two forces that you don't know. That the one, pick one of the two unknown forces. So I'm going to pick R A and draw a cross over it. Cool. And here's what you're going to write. You're going to write them these words. You're going to write hinge at A. Okay? So in other words, we are going to put our hinge here. We're going to treat it like a hinge here. Now, that means we're considering moments, my buddies. And remember how I talked to you about net moments, in that the anti-clockwise um, would be balanced by the clockwise, and whichever one was more uh, would be the direction that something spun, right? Now, we're given that this is an equilibrium. So the net moment of this is going to be zero for every single one. So if I were to write down like t net, it's going to be zero. Like whatever the moments are, it's going to be zero. So in, instead of we're going to yeah, instead of writing t net then every single time, I've got a shortcut, and here's what it is. You can just say this: the anti-clockwise moments are going to be in balance with the clockwise moments if it's not going to spin. Cool. Now if our hinge is here, or we draw them across. We're going to do force times a distance for every single thing. So first things first is what's making it go anti-clockwise this way around? Well, if you said RC, you're right. So we have RC. And at what distance is RC acting? Well, two. Because remembering, we're using this, this um, formula. Force times a distance. Cool? Now clockwise, buddies. What's making it go clockwise? Well, the weight is. And how was the distance to the weight? Well, 1.5. So, guess what, buddies? You're almost there. 2RC equals, and it actually told us the weight. It said the weight was 20 newtons. So we don't even need to use G, because the weight was actually given as newtons. So this is just going to be 20 times 1.5. And there you go. I think the answer is 15. <laughs> Should I check in my calculator just to be sure? No, I don't need to. 20 times 1.5 is 30. How is 15? The answer is 15 newtons. So we just used moments to solve for a force that we couldn't solve using net force equation. Um, and the thing wasn't even spinning. It's not even a moments question. How powerful is this moments thing that you just that we just discovered? It's awesome, isn't it? It's cool. Cool. Now, how are we gonna get the other one then? How do we get what our A is? There's two ways really, and one of them is easier and one of them is harder. Cool. If you said that one of the ways you could do it is this, if you wanted to, um, you could move your hinge to here, okay? Um, that would get rid of RC, and it would keep RA. Did you get me, my buddies? So RC would be gone, and RA would still be in it, because the distance to RC, if the hinge is at RC, to the hinge is zero. So it would just get rid of RC. You could do it that way. That's the harder way. Um, or you could rely on the fact that this is now 15, right? We know that this is um, 15. Cool. So, you know what else we could do? We could do net force equation now because we have enough variables. So what are we going to do? Vert! Which way do you want to be positive? Up! And now we can go F net. So we don't even have to do the moments all the way through. F net then. It's going to be this. It's going to be RA because that's the one that we that's pointed up plus the 15 which is RC. Um, take away the 20 which is the weight. Um, now is it accelerating upward? Well, no, it isn't. So F net is zero. So it is in equilibrium, which means that we're going to get zero equals RA take five, which means that RA is five newtons. And bang, you've just married up two of the most important units in the whole of mechanics. You did a net force equation after you used moments to simplify the problem. How exciting, my buddies. Uh, just as a little physics further note for you, would it make sense that RC would have way more um, would have more weight on it than what RA would. Would it make sense that RC is being push is having to push up harder than RA is? Well, yeah, it would. And the reason why is it's closer to the weight, so the weight is having to be. Um, see what I mean? The distance is closer to it, so it's going to have to balance that out a little bit more. Whereas RA is further away, it has to take less of the weight. RC is supporting both sides of the plank. RA is only supporting the one side. So it does make sense as well that RC would be bigger. Cool. Hopefully you feel amazing. Swiftly on. Here we go. Uh, a little bit harder now. And here, let's do it. 
It says a uniform beam AB of mass 40 kilograms and length 5, okay, rests horizontally on support C and D, where AC is DB is 1. Yep. Now it says, okay, we need the 40 kilograms. It says when a mass of a man of mass 80 kilograms stands on the beam at E, the magnitude of the reactive force, oh gosh, this is a tricky one. The magnitude of the reaction at D is twice the reaction at A, at C, I should say. Um, by modeling the beam as a rod and the man as a particle, find the distance AE. Okay, a bit harder, but to be honest, it is the same. It's just, it is the same, but a bit harder as much as that maybe doesn't make sense. It is the same kind of question as we just did, but just a bit trickier. So what are we going to do first? First step? That's it. Get the picture drawn. Let's do it. I'm drawing my beam as two-dimensional to highlight to me so I remember that it has a mass. Okay, so uh, let's do it. There was this here. We've got our little thingy at C. So that's C, that's A at the end, that's B at this end. There's a D here as well. D. Uh, the man is at E, and E is kind of toward the middle there. So I'll just I'll draw the bloke here. He can be... Yeah, I'm good at drawing people, as you can see. And he's at E, <laughs> so there he is. And let's do it. Let's get some forces on then. Or let's get some distances on first. This is one meter to there to there. Uh, this is one meter from there to there. Um, how big is the middle? How big will the middle be? I forgot to highlight that. How big will the middle be? That's right. It's three meters in the middle, isn't it? Because um, it has to equal five altogether. So three, four, five. Cool. Uh, cool. Right. Forces, my buddies. Tell me a force that's acting on it. If you said it has a mass, so it has a weight, the rod itself has a weight, well, here you go then, my buddies. What you're going to find then is the whole beam is one is um, five meters long, so the beam's weight is going to be at the exact center. So are you ready? That is the weight of the beam. Cool? Um, it's going to be at a distance, as we say, of 2.5 meters, because it is midway. Cool. That's actually used the modeling assumption here by modeling the beam as a rod. That implies that it's um that it's got its weight acting in the middle and it's the same throughout. So there you go, 2.5 meters. Uh, next thing, what other force do we feel? Well, the bloke as well. He's got a weight as well. So we have the bloke at E. So I'm going to call him W. I could call him W E, but I'm going to call him W M for weight of the man. Um, I know that he is 80 kilograms. I know that the beam is actually 40 kilograms as well. You don't really need to label that, but the beam's 40 kilograms. Um, and what other forces are there? That's it. There's the forces the, of the two supports. So there's the reaction force at C, and there's also the reaction force at D. So we have two reaction forces. Oops, D, 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 D. Okay. Um, D. Now, it says something about these reaction forces. This is a tough one. It says something about these reaction forces. It says the, it says the magnitude of the reaction at D is twice that at C. So if R at C is just R, what would R at D be? That's it, 2R. Now we've used that line as well. Get it, buddies? Tricky question, but still get it? Cool. Now, what on earth are we actually trying to find? What on earth are we trying to figure out? By modeling the beam as rod as a particle, find the distance AE, and A was at the end. Okay, so actually we're after a distance this time. We don't know how long this is. From there, the man to the end. And there you go. I think the layout is done now, and hopefully the question will be um, easier from there. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. So what are we going to do next then, my buddies? What on earth are we going to do? What would you like to do first of all? Well... I know what I would do, but I kind of am jumping to the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend as though I don't know what I'm supposed to do first. And I'm going to tell you this, my buddies. Um, for sure, we need to know what x is, right? So how am I going to get an equation that has x in it? Like, what on earth am I going to do to get an equation with x in it? Well, x is measured from a, right? So a really sensible idea would be to hinge at a. Now, I know I'm using moments here because... Um, I know I'm using moments here because I need a distance involved. That's my hint. So let's do it. It's an equilibrium. So instead of using T net, 
I'm going to just cut to the chase. Anti-clockwise is going to equal clockwise when these are in equilibrium. Cool. Now, have a look at the picture. We're holding the thing at A. What would make it spin this way around anti-clockwise? Well, RC would, for sure. Yeah, because that's going to make it go up and around. So we're going to have RC, which is just actually R, and that's at a distance of 1 from the hinge. Cool. RD is also going to make it spin around the other way. So we also have plus um, RD, but RD is actually 2R. So let's cut to the chase and just put 2R in there as well. So we're going to get, oh my gosh, after I've just drawn it wrong twice. Okay, we're going to put 2R in there as well, 2R. And um, what distance is that away from, from A? Well, 4. Cool. That's it for the anti-clockwise. Now for the clockwise, what are we going to get? So going around this way. Well, there's two things we're going to get. We're going to get the weight of the beam. So we're going to get the weight of the beam acting at a distance of 2.5 meters from the hinge. Plus, we're also going to get uh, the weight of the man. But we don't know how far that is from the hinge. That's the x. But don't forget, it's really good that that x is in there because that's that's what we want. That's, that's our trick. Okay, that's what we need. Cool. So let's simplify, my buddies. We're going to get here r plus 2 times 4 is 8r. Uh, the man, the beam, I mean, is 40 kilograms. G is 9.8 times 2.5. The man was 80 times 9.8 times X. Um, keep simplifying. 9R is going to equal, let's cut to the chase. Let's do it. 40, oops, my calculator is off. 40 times 9.8 times 2.5 makes 980. So we're going to get 980 plus AD times 9.8 equals 784. 784x. Okay, ready for a little analysis of it. It's good that x, that x is in there because we need it. It's bad that r is in there because r is preventing us from solving. Right then, buddies, what do you want to do next then? What should we do? Well, you've got several options, but may as well go for the easiest, okay? Several options. You can move the hinge to elsewhere. You can literally move the hinge wherever you want. You could put the hinge at C, at E, at B, at D. You could put the hinge wherever you want. At, at the end, yeah. Um, you can move the hinge, but the hinging pullover is a little bit harder than just resolving. And if we just need a, an equation in it that's got R, we want to get rid of R. Well, we can get an equation for ours by resolving. So you ready? V oh, green is the wrong color. Vert! Let's do it. Vert! And pick a way to be positive. Well, how about up? And we can F net it, because F net is our friend. We love going back to F net. Um, well, what's going upward? Well, you have an R, and you have a 2R going upward. What's going downward? Well, you've got the weight of the beam, which is 40 times 9.8. And you've also got the weight of the man, which is 80 times 9.8. Cool? It's not accelerating. It's in equilibrium. So there's no acceleration. F net is 0. So we're going to be left with 0 equals 3R. And we're going to be left with um, 40 plus 80 9.8. And that whole side is 1176. Take away 1176, which now you can solve. So positive 1176, that will be, divided by 3 makes 392. So R is actually 392 Newtons. Cool beans? Well, sweet, that's brilliant. Well, guess what, buddies? Bish, bash, bosh, you pretty much solved it because you're already um, simultaneous equation legends. So let's do it. 9 times 392 equals 980 plus 784x, and all together, there's never ever any steps for for working things out mechanically. There's always steps for laying things out, like the f-net equation and the net moments equations and stuff, but there's never a mark for, for the mechanics of putting the numbers in, so I'm just going to skip all the steps. 9 times 392, uh, take away 980 equals that, divided by 784. I think the answer is 3.25. Two five meters. Quick check of it. 
to see if it seems reasonable. Would it be reasonable that it's 3.25? Well, yeah, because it's so 3.25. Seems right to me because it's 4 meters to get to the hinge. It won't be quite to the hinge, but it'll be toward the hinge. I agree. I think we're right. Happy days, buddies. Cool, cool, cool. Right then. So here we go. One final question for us to work on. Boom. Um, tricky because it's on an angle, but not too bad. A uniform rod, PQ, is hinged at the point P and is held at equilibrium at an angle of 50 degrees to horizontal by a force of magnitude F um, acting perpendicular to the rod at Q. My golly. Given that the rod is length 3 meters and a mass of 8 kilograms, find the value of F. Okay, buddies, it's easier than it looks, and I'm going to show you why, and you're going to get lots of practice, so if you're finding this stressy, don't worry, don't be stressed, it'll be easy in a minute. Okay, so here we go. Start by drawing your picture out every single time. I've drawn it two-dimensionally, so I won't forget that, it's, that, it's, um, that it has got a mass. It's already given us the forces, luckily, or nicely, kindly. So what we've got then is we've got its weight, which they've called 8GN, which is right. And we also know that F is acting perpendicular to this, and that's what has to figure out, F. Uh, it's given as well that this is 50 degrees. And we're also knowing that this is point P, uh, where it touches the ground, and this is point Q. Right then, its length is 3 meters, so let's get that on there too. 3 meters. Oops, oh, drat. It takes a minute for the pens to change color. It's funny like that. 3 meters is how long it is, and it does say it's uniform, so how far is it to get to the weight? Well, 1.5 meters up the rod on the angle. Cool. Right then, guys, let's do it. We're after F. We know what W is, actually, because it tells us all the information, so this is just going to be a one-step question, although it is going to be a horrible question. Where do we want to hinge? Well, not in the middle, because that would get rid of something that we know. Not at P, because, uh, or no, I mean not at Q, because that would get rid of F. So definitely at P. Now, there is actually a normal contact force at P as well. There's going to be a contact force here at P. Um, oops, where's the pen? That's going to be up like that. And there's also going to be a friction pulling that way. But all of these complicated forces that we don't want to deal with, we can just bin off. Because if we put the hinge at P, these forces go away because the distance between the hinge and them is zero. So are you ready? We're going to hinge at P to get rid of those awkward forces that are also there. Okay, so hinge at P. Now here we go, my buddies. Hinging at P, we're going to do this. We are going to start off by saying anti-clockwise equals clockwise. Cool, cool, cool. Now here we go. Which one's going to make it spin that way? Well, F is. Now there's one trick to this now. It's a significant trick, but it's a trick. We need to remember that the distance to that force is not going to be um, 3 meters. Well, actually, it is in this case. Yeah, the distance is the shortest possible distance between the force and the line, between the line of action of the force and the hinge. So what's the shortest way to get from P to the red and purple line that I've just drawn? Is it 3? Well, yeah, it is actually. So that was good. That was lucky. Okay, let's go clockwise. Which one's making it go clockwise? Well, the weight is. The weight's the one that's making it go clockwise. Um, and what's the and what's the distance to the weight? Is it one point five? Is that the shortest distance to the line of action of the force of the weight? Well, no. And here's why. Check it out, buddies. This is the line of action of the weight. Is the shortest distance up the rod like that? No, it isn't. The shortest distance, actually, is along the floor, because that's how you meet the line at a right angle. Now you've got to be crafty. You know that this distance, you know the hypotenuse of this triangle, is 1.5. I know it's just above it, but I'm just showing you. That's 1.5, that distance there, right? And what we need, actually, is this distance here. Which means, actually, my buddies, that cos of 50 is x over 1.5, which means that x is actually just 1.5 cos 50. 
which now that I've written it, I'll bet you, you guys can see quite clearly why it'd be 1.5 cos 50. We've been doing these shortcut trig things all the way along. So 1.5 cos 50 is what that's going to be. And boom, you're actually in a position to solve now, because look at this, the F is, well, this is just gonna be three F. And on this side, um, it's gonna be MG, so it's eight times 9.8, because that's what weight is, times 1.5 cos 50. So this is a horribly harder question than the last ones, but actually it's not too, it's not as bad as it looks. It's only just one thing in the end. It's just knowing about the lines of action of the force. Okay, no marks for any of this. So let's just go quick. Eight times 9.8 times 1.5 times cos of 50 equals, divide by three equals. The answer to this question is 25.2 newtons is that force. So I hope you have your head around it. We are going to be doing lots of practice. So if you found especially this one a bit dodgy, don't worry. We're going to do lots of practice. It'll be fine. You're going to be amazing at this. And I hope you get it. Cool. For the rest of the lesson time, my buddies, here's what you are going to do. Shaboosh. I want you. I love that. You should, yeah, Homer and his drinking bird. Ah, because it's like a moments thing because that's how they work. Anyway, um, I want you to try page 78. Do question 3 through 11. So don't do 1 and 2. They're too easy. Um, but do do a mix of 3 through 11. Do a proper mix in that you pick some hard ones and some not so hard ones. And I suppose that's it. When you're all done, upload it on to show my homework for me. And that's it. So cool beans. See you next time. Bye, buddies.